You're listening to the Batuta Advocates Weekly News Wrap on Desert Rock FM 96.5. Welcome back to the Batuta News Bulletin. The day is Thursday the 27th of June. Coming live out of the Baxter Boots studio to myself, Clancy Overall, Errol Parker, editor-at-large, and of course, our news reader, Wendell Hussey. How are you today, guys? Yeah, about as good as I'll ever be. Very well, thank you, Clancy, and good to be back for another week. First up today, there's some interesting news from down south, with the New South Wales Premier ordering developers to provide emergency tubes of cellies in all new high-rise buildings. Well, it's the least she could do. It is the least she could do after all those evacuations of the towers in Sydney. Of course, the Opal Tower in the Olympic Park, Homebush region, and another one of late down in uh, South Sydney near the port. We're starting to see what initially was quite exciting news for the developers in that they thought the cracks might open up a bit more real estate in the building, which they could flog off for over a million dollars per crack. But we're seeing things actually looking a bit more dangerous than we initially thought, Wendell. Yeah, absolutely. And while some are applauding Gladys Berejiklian for clamping down on developers and her anti-developer stance, one of our readers from down there named Stuart Grant made an interesting point in the comments section. He asked which one of the Premier's buddies is a stakeholder in Sellies. So ICAC, if you're listening, maybe something to have a look at. Now for some more national news, there's been an exciting piece of research released this week as well. A correlation has been found between eating Play-Doh as a child and adding rear spoilers to XLs. Well, I think I must be an outlier in that, Wendell, because I used to eat a lot of Play-Doh as a boy. I ate the stuff that you bought in stores and I bought the homemade stuff. And I tell you what, from my memory, I would say that I would rather eat the stuff that you made at home. It was much tastier. A little less salty, the stuff from home. Yeah. Have either of you ever owned an XL or a Hyundai of any variety? No, I like to buy local. Mm. And you know that. Mm. No, I only ever tried Play-Doh once and I didn't particularly like it. So maybe that's why I ended up with a Nissan Skyline. Mm. What else is in the news? Back home in town now and we wrote a story about a local teacher who's begun the first phase of writing reports by telling everybody she's writing reports. Well, that is the first step to getting your reports done is you need to go around and tell everyone around town that you're going to start writing your reports, which I guess might excuse your upcoming erratic behaviour. Yes, it's part and parcel with the career as an educator in the Australian school system. It's up there with saying that the holidays aren't long enough when we all know they go for 10 to 12 weeks a year on break. Well, the teacher I spoke to in this story, she actually told me, you know, it takes a while to try and find the nicest, most articulate way to tell parents that their little kid is as dumb as a box of rocks. Yes, and, you know, judging by some of the juveniles I've seen getting around this town, that would have to happen a lot down there at the Batuta Grove, Batuta Heights Primary Schools. Yeah, certainly. Moving along to sports news now, and there's been one narrative that's been dominating headlines for a while now, and that resurfaced last week when Israel Folau started taking part in the ancient Christian tradition of crowdfunding his own salary. Fuck, I'm sick of this. Yes, this multi-millionaire sports star... He's put his own type of collection played out to pay his way to defend his right to post memes that would airdrop to him by his fundamentalist Christian pastor, which have since breached a contract that he had with Australian rugby for the second or third time. He's still allowed to say those things. There's no police knocking on his door, but he isn't allowed to play rugby anymore. And I guess he's taken that to court and he needs the Christian community to pay and the greater homophobic kind of sentiment in Australia. I, I guess they're not all Christians donating to Israel Folau, but he's up over $2 million at this point, isn't he, Wendell? Yeah, they do seem to be paying his over $2 million at the time of recording, so who knows what it'll get to. But a short time after he did put the collection plate out, he was left thanking the Lord that he did do that. Because as we broke in an exclusive story, Izzy had to earmark some of his legal fees for his Lambo after the coil pack shit itself. Yes, was he trying to distract himself from the media circus? I wonder when he went for a spin in his half-million-dollar Italian-made sports car, and it's obviously ended up costing him quite a bit. Yes, God only knows himself how much a coil pack would cost for a Lamborghini, and I guess Israel's going to find out soon, isn't he? Yes, you can never really know, even with the cars we mentioned earlier, the Hyundai XL, a mechanic will tell you whatever. And when you're dealing with a car as valuable as a... uh, 
Lamborghini, no doubt Italian mechanics, I reckon they'll charge you whatever they pull out of their ass. Probably change the windscreen wipers on it too. And there will be a few more twists and turns in the Izzy saga to come, I'd say. But that's the bulletin for this week because that's all we've got here. So thanks for tuning in again and we'll talk to you again next week. Until then, I'm Wendell Hussey. And I'm Errol Parker. And I'm Clancy Overall. You be kind to each other. Enjoy your weekend.